There are so many fascinating places on our planet that you can sometimes conduct an experiment and be absolutely blown away by the results. Consider these for instance. Have you ever thought of trying to make pancakes in the Sahara? What about trying to play basketball on Mount Everest? Or how about trying to fly a kite in Antarctica? Wouldn't it be great to try one of these activities, or even all of them, and see whether they actually work? In addition to these experiments, have you considered dropping a steel ball into the Marianas Trench? What may possibly happen to the ball as it falls, and what happens when it reaches the bottom? Well, this particular matter grabbed my attention, so I plan to conduct my own scientific research on this. Of course, we cannot just decide to go to the Mariana Trench and be there easily. It wouldn't be that simple. Moreover, putting steel balls in it isn't a good idea, as many people would probably even stop us from doing this. So, in order to conduct this research, various conditions must be taken into consideration. We need to gather information about the trench before we begin, so that we can control the situation. The Mariana Trench, as we all know, is the deepest ocean trench people have ever discovered. With the help of a map, we can easily visualize its location. This is the Pacific Ocean. On its western side lies the Mariana Islands. The eastern side of the Mariana Islands is where the large crescent moon in the water is located, and it is the Mariana Trench. Mariana Trench has its deepest point called the Challenger Deep, which is 10,994 meters or 36,099 feet below sea level, plus or minus a little more, which is really incredible, right? But how was the trench found, and who discovered it? It was in the year 1875 when the crew of the sailing ship HMS Challenger discovered the place for the first time. They even tried to measure its depth at the time, but they weren't able to do so due to the restricted functionality of the technology available at the time. Fortunately, another ship named Challenger explored the trench 76 years later to find out what the crew of the HMS Challenger couldn't. Since they successfully made their mission and the deepest point was determined, the name Challenger Deep was finally coined. At the same time, the Mariana Trench has established itself as the world's deepest region. The Mariana Trench depth has a massive effect on pressure, like anywhere else. As a rule of nature, as depth increases, pressure rises, and as a result, the pressure at Challenger Deep is over a thousand times higher than that of the pressure at sea level, measuring 108.6 megapascals. Also keep in mind that when there is depth, the density of water also changes. On the top of the ocean, everything appears normal, but as density increases with depth, the water becomes 5% denser at the deepest point. Furthermore, the temperature falls from 1 to 4 degrees Celsius, which is approximately 34 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit. The water temperature on Guam's coast ranges from 27 to 29 degrees Celsius, or 80 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, this is quite a hot area. So why is it that the Challenger's Deep is so cold? The reason for this is that the sun's rays cannot penetrate the Mariana Trench's deep water, resulting in temperature differences. All of these things, of course, have an impact on the species that live in the Mariana Trench. Some of the marine animals are used to surviving in complete darkness, extreme cold, and extreme pressure. However, being used to that setup is only applicable for original species of the Mariana Trench. So what about steel balls? Will temperature and pressure affect a steel ball, which isn't particularly that strong? Well, honestly, with this experiment, the temperature has no effect on the steel ball. Temperatures of 1 to 4 degrees Celsius or 34 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit aren't that big a deal for steel. So if it's not the atmosphere, what is it that we need to think about in this experiment? The answer is pressure. In this experiment, pressure has a very significant role. Pressure has the potential to compress a substance to the point where it can be torn apart. That is why, in the Mariana Trench, a pillar of water may easily kill a person. It would just take a split second for that to occur. But that is only applicable with humans, not with Wolverine. Yes, that X-Men character with the adamantium skeleton. 
What I'm trying to point out is that the human body is not strong enough to endure such extreme pressure. But things are different when it comes to metal. In fact, when steel is exposed to pressure of more than 108.6 megapascals, or around twice this number if you use very rough estimations, it doesn't break. Instead, it can change its shape. So in order for steel balls to change shape, you'd have to put them into a place where there is an excess of pressure, like deep into the earth, or just throw it into space. Yes, the ocean's pressure is insufficient for steel to change its shape. The pressure in the Mariana Trench could only compress the steel ball and reduce its size at a thousandth of a percent. You wouldn't even know that the ball had gotten smaller visually. This also works with the Mariana Trench's species, since it is impossible for them to grasp such concepts. For instance, if a deep sea fish sees a steel ball float past him, that fish would not try to figure out how pressure impacts the ball. And since the ball cannot be eaten, it is unlikely to pique the inhabitants' curiosity. The changes in the ball's size, however, will not be permanent if you lift the ball out from the water. The pressure will return to normal when you remove the ball out of the water, and the ball will return to its original shape. No one will notice this difference except for engineers who are used to taking precise measurements. Now, let's try to determine the speed that the ball would take as it sinks. At first, we might think that the ball would sink quite slowly and smoothly due to the water. But this is not the case. When a steel ball moves through water, it quickly reaches its terminal speed and sinks fast. This is the rate at which the gravitational pull is balanced by the medium's resistance force and other considerations. As a result, the ball would sink at a maximum speed of 15 meters per second, or 49 feet per second. To understand it easily, without the use of formulas, let us equate it to the speed of a car moving in the city. That's really quick and a little harmful, considering that there could be marine animals in the ball's path as it sinks. But let's set that aside for a moment, and let's assume that the ball sinks properly, and no ocean creature gets in the way of the ball. What could happen is that the steel ball will reach the Mariana Trench bottom in around 12 minutes. It will then hit the bottom and become stuck in the silt, and possibly form a small funnel. And that could be dubbed as one of the most significant events ever happening in the Mariana Trench. But what if we didn't use a steel ball and instead used something more ordinary, like a tennis ball, or perhaps a bowling ball, which is more interesting than a tennis ball? A bowling ball can come in a variety of types. It could be made of plastic, with or without the addition of rubber, ceramics, or even glass in some cases. Bowling balls are usually made without metal. That is why bowling balls can float on top of water. They can stay on the surface in any situation. The bowling ball must weigh more than 5.5 kilos, or more than 12 pounds, to sink in the water. There are objects with such weights, but let's take this experiment a bit further. Let's drop a bowling ball weighing 7 kilograms or 15 pounds in the Mariana Trench. It will reach the bottom in 2 hours and 20 minutes. If it sinks at a speed of 1.3 meters per second or 4.2 feet per second. At this rate, you can literally throw the ball into the water and watch a movie. The moment you finish watching, it'll just be in time for the ball to hit the bottom. However, a 5 kilogram or 13 pound ball will reach the bottom for about four and a half hours. If the ball is made of iron, the sinking duration will take 30 minutes. Alternatively, a bowling ball made out of lead will take 23 minutes to hit the bottom. And lastly, a ball made of pure gold takes only 17 minutes to reach the bottom. So for the purpose of exploration, why don't we just drop all these balls into the ocean? Let's pretend we threw all of these bowling balls into the Mariana Trench, and there are now plenty of objects in its bottom. However, what do you think will happen to the first steel ball we dropped after it's been in the bottom for a week, or maybe a month, or even a year? The ball will just stay there in the Mariana Trench for a long period of time. This is because it couldn't be destroyed by rust, since rust does not form in the same way given Mariana Trench's depth. However, there are bacteria that cling to metals and oxidize them at the bottom of oceans. For years, such organisms, for example, have been destroying the Titanic. The Titanic sank at a depth of 3.8 kilometers, or 2.3 miles, which is absolutely nothing compared to the depth of the Mariana Trench. However, 
There is no difference when it comes to the bacteria in these depths in general. If the steel ball is very small, it wouldn't be affected even with the extreme pressure. However, these bacteria may cause the steel ball to corrode. If this happens, the ball will break and combine with water and silt at the bottom. I can't guarantee that the same will happen to a plastic ball, especially since any synthetic material must be removed from the ocean because it will have a significant environmental impact. So if you suddenly decide to try this experiment in real life, keep in mind that it's still essential to keep things clean in order to avoid harming marine life and the ecosystem. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified when new videos are released. And as always, thanks for watching.